New Jersey is a state that has the distinction of being near the center of asbestos history. Not only is there an abundance of naturally occurring asbestos in the state, but New Jersey was where the legal tide turned against asbestos corporations in a big way. Lawsuits involving asbestos date back to the late 1920s. However, until 1977, corporations were able to use what was known as the state-of-the-art defense. Since asbestos disease researcher Dr. Irving Selikoff did not present his findings on the connection between asbestos and respiratory disease until 1964, corporate management had no way of knowing of these hazards and therefore could not be held responsible for such diseases resulting from exposure taking place prior to that date. Carl Ash, a Springfield, New Jersey lawyer, was representing plaintiffs who had been employed for, by Ray Bestus Manhattan at a Passaic asbestos plant. It was his discovery of what became to be known as the Sumner Simpson Papers in one of the Raybestos corporate offices that exposed an egregious conspiracy between Raybestos and Johns Manville to keep information about asbestos health hazards of asbestos hidden from the public. This revelation exposed corporate America for what it often was and all too often continues to be, an institution to which human life is meaningless compared to profits. New Jersey's Asbestos Industries. There are at least 60 job sites at which New Jersey workers have suffered asbestos exposure. Most are operated by companies whose industries are the most commonly associated with asbestos use. Shipyards, power generation plants, oil refineries, and chemical plants. The list includes a New Jersey company, DuPont Chemical. This corporation is arguably one of the worst air polluters on the planet. The Political Economy Research Institute puts it at the top of its Toxic 100 list. The forms of asbestos typically used at chemical plants are particularly dangerous. Amosite, brown asbestos, and cresetolite, blue asbestos, are of the amphibole variety, which are the hard needle-like fibers primarily implicated in the development of mesothelioma. Oil refineries. Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry data indicates that oil industry employees are among those who have the highest risk of asbestos exposure. Petroleum and petrochemicals are highly flammable as well as toxic. It is for these reasons that asbestos containing insulation and protective gear were frequently used. New Jersey oil refineries include those run and operated by California Oil, Esso, Halliburton, Hess, Mobile, Standard, Texaco, and Tosco. Power plants. Numerous power plants operate in New Jersey. Center for Health Statistics have long indicated the asbestos danger faced by electricians, pipe fitters, boiler makers, and other repair and maintenance personnel. In addition to being a flame retardant, asbestos fabric is also an excellent insulator and it was used extensively in the manufacture of electric wiring, panel partitions, and electrical cloth. Because of this, workers at the RCA factory were also exposed. Asbestos was also used extensively in the actual construction of these facilities. A recent study in Puerto Rico found that 13% of all power plant workers exhibited some abnormality in chest x-rays. Shipyards. Among veterans, former Navy personnel are among those who suffer from the highest rates of asbestos disease. Such illnesses were ultimately responsible for as many deaths as combat injuries during the Second World War. In fact, it was a cruise ship fire off the coast of New Jersey over 70 years ago that led the maritime industry to start using asbestos insulation throughout the construction of seagoing vessels. A recent study involving 4,700 workers at the National Cancer Institute in Bethesda, Maryland found the shipyard workers faced a significantly elevated risk of contracting asbestos disease. Asbestos death rates. Between 1980 and 2000, the population of New Jersey went from 7.36 million to 8.41 million. During that period, there was a total of 2,828 deaths related to asbestos. Those from asbestos outnumbered those from mesothelioma by nearly 740, a statistical ratio of 1.7 to 1. Legal resources in New Jersey. 
a search through the New Jersey Federal District Court cases for asbestos-related personal injury product liability lawsuits brings one recent case, Hampton versus Armstrong World Industries. New Jersey is ranked eighth in the U.S. for mesothelioma cases, with a mesothelioma mortality rate of 17.2 per million. New Jersey has a crude mortality rank of six in the country. In New Jersey, there are a number of known asbestos-exposed areas. These include the Atlantic City Electrical Company, the Atlantic City Power Deep Water Plant, the Kearney Federal Shipyard, Johns Manville in Manville, the Coastal Oil Refinery in National Park, the SO Oil and Sun Oil Refineries in Newark. Many more sites are listed in this section of asbestos.net. Individuals living or working near these areas should be checked regularly for signs of mesothelioma in order to file any lawsuits within the state's statute of limitations. While many of these sites have been inspected and some have even been cleaned up, anyone who worked or lived in these areas before asbestos contamination was reported can still be affected. Also, it is important to keep in mind that these are only known asbestos sites. Other areas in the state may also contain asbestos but may not have been reported as such. An important case involving asbestos was filed in Middlesex County in central New Jersey in June of 2007. The case was filed on behalf of a woman whose husband and children's break work exposed her to asbestos. The woman was diagnosed with mesothelioma in 2002 and died from her illness shortly after mesothelioma treatments were attempted at Virtua West Jersey Hospital. The lawsuit alleged that she contracted mesothelioma as a result of unknowingly being exposed to asbestos when she laundered the dusty clothes and the rags that were used by her husband and children after they performed the brake work, primarily using asbestos-containing Bendix brakes. This case follows March 2007 recommendations from the Environmental Protection Agency regarding automotive repairs and the importance of reducing or eliminating asbestos exposure from such work. The guideline brochure entitled Current Best Practices for Presenting Asbestos Exposure Among Brake and Clutch Repair Workers is similar to guidance that the agency has been distributing since 1986. The EPA explains in the brochure that by using the recommended practices, home mechanics can reduce potential asbestos exposure and minimize their potential risk of contracting asbestos-related diseases and illnesses. Those interested in filing lawsuits should know that the statute of limitations for personal injury law in New Jersey is two years with the discovery rule that states that this amount of time begins when the problem, in this case the mesothelioma, either was discovered or should have been discovered. There is an additional note in the law that counts the date of the occurrence or accident in the computation of the statute of limitations. Wrongful death cases fall under the same statute of limitations and discovery rule as long as the statute of limitations for personal injury has not expired before death. There is no specific statute about asbestos in New Jersey. Thank you for watching. This video was produced by asbestos.net, a leading resource on all aspects of asbestos and mesothelioma. Our priority is to inform victims about the devastating effects of asbestos exposure, mesothelioma, asbestos cancer, asbestosis, and other asbestos-related diseases, and to advise them with a wealth of information. Individuals whose lives have been touched by mesothelioma have numerous questions and concerns. Their caregivers and family members also need accurate, reliable information. If you or a loved one have been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos cancer and need more information, we invite you to visit and explore the thousands of pages of oncologist-reviewed material on asbestos.net to call our convenient toll-free number shown below and speak with a mesothelioma specialist, or to use the simple contact form found at asbestos.net to request a free copy of our informative books, custom inserts, and DVD. Asbestos.net, information and help for patients and families.